What's happening, everyone? James Lynch here doing a quick reaction video to the news that UFC 308 has got its lineup set. This according to UFC President Dana White. Shout out to MMA Orbit for writing down the order here. Uh, but uh, this is a very, very, very stacked card. Let's go through every single fight. I'll talk about the context of every fight. Then I'll give you my early pick on every fight as well. And I'll talk about some things that this also leads to with the fact that this is the lineup they went with. Uh, first and foremost, Ilya Teporia and Max Holloway. We were hearing the rumors. I'm a little bit surprised they went with a main event that does not involve a Muslim fighter considering this isn't Abu Dhabi. You figured they'd cater more to the crowd that way. That's typically been a theme for them. But this is such a massive fight that, you know, they also want to put on a really good card for the uh, Middle Eastern crowd. So again, this makes sense from that perspective. Just glad this fight's officially booked. We kept hearing stuff like, you know, Holloway didn't want to fight him or vice versa. Like we always knew this fight was going to happen. It's just a matter of where and when. Uh, so it is going to be taking place at UFC 308. Good to see that. Second fight, Robert Whitaker, Hamzat Chimaev. I'm a bit surprised they went this route um, just because Whitaker fought Ikram Right. And then that was like the short notice fight. And you figured that that the UFC would have rewarded Whitaker for maybe a title shot or something like that. Instead, instead, he's getting the fight rebooked with Chimaev. I don't mind this fight in the sense that I want to see Chimaev tested. That's my big thing is that, you know, he has not fought a ranked middleweight yet. So I do want to see him tested. I think Paulo Costa would have been the better fight just because then, you know, Whitaker kind of did the job of fighting the replacement fighter, which he had a lot to lose in that fight. Let's be honest here. Right. Fighting Ikram, who wasn't ranked, very dangerous. Whitaker goes out there and beats him. Um, and I, this also means that Whitaker's not getting the next title shot, I would assume, um, unless they're willing to do a situation where the winner of Whitaker, Chimaev, then gets the title shot and they're just going to do it down the line. But I wonder what this means for Sean Strickland. So that was another thing that popped in my head uh, with rebooking Whitaker and Chimaev. Cyril Gaon and Volkov, we pretty much knew that was happening. I don't know what took so long to actually confirm that officially. That makes sense as Tom Aspinall needs to wait for his next challenger. Uh, Gaon and Volkov is probably going to be the next one. I know people think John Jones is going to fight Aspinall. As I've said many times on this channel, I don't think that happens. I think Jones is going to retire when he fights and most likely defeats Stipe Miocic. And this is the one that I scratch my head at. And I know there's going to be people arguing and being like, what's the big deal? Why is Ankalaya fighting Rakic? Rakic came off a knockout loss to Yuri in his last fight at UFC 300. I know it's a fresh matchup for Megaman Ankalaya, but... Like, I, I just don't know, like, what, like, it's like a, taking a step backwards in a way. I know Rakic, I guess Rakic would technically be ranked higher than Johnny Walker, because that was the big thing was people are like, well, Johnny Walker's not very good. Yeah, but he's ranked. So Walker's nine, Rakic is fifth. I don't know. I just feel like Ankle Ive and Pereira should have been the next fight. Now, I understand as well if Pereira is like, look, I don't want to fight in the Middle East. I just did you guys a favor by saving, um, you know, two UFC cards, right? The UFC 300 card and the UFC uh, 303 card. I can understand Pereira needing some time off. So maybe it was a case of just keeping Ankle Ive active or they have other plans for Pereira. One thing I mentioned in my video yesterday when we found out Ankle Ive was not going to be fighting Pereira next is if Izzy beats Drakus Duplessis, that's a possibility of him moving up and fighting Pereira. Is it fair? No, but that's also an option I forgot to mention in my video. So again, Ankle Ive Rakic is going to be a fun fight, but is anyone picking Rakic here? Like I think Ankle Ive is probably going to win that fight. Um, I, I just don't think it does much for Ankle Ive other than keep him active. Um, I, again, have been very much, you know, advocating for Ankle Live and Alex Paris. Anyways, let's work our way up as far as picks. Um, we could do that. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, some other things with Abu Dhabi. So, again, Ankle Live Rakic. I think Ankle Live wins that all day. I think Rakic is exciting. He was having success with Yuri prior to the knockout. But, you know, again, he hasn't fought that much. He's dealt with injuries. I take Ankle Live on that fight all day. I think Cyril Gon beats Volkov. Um... We'll see if Volkov tries to take him to the ground, but I think Gon overall is the more complete fighter. I know Volkov has, uh, obviously they've had the first fight and Gon won, but I think, you know, both have certainly evolved, especially on the Volkov end. He's looked great in his last couple fights. So, um, yeah, I, I slightly lean Gon in that fight. I just think he's more complete. This one I'm going to get a lot of flack for, but I'm not changing my pick. And I think, you know, I ended up being right when he fought Ikram. But I like Whitaker against Chimaev for the simple fact that I don't think Chimaev will be able to finish Whitaker quickly. Um, that's been sort of his thing is like he runs in there and he finishes you early. We saw him do that to Holland and so many other fighters uh, where Chimaev basically blitzes you and finishes the fight early. Whitaker's not really that guy. Like you even look at his knockout losses at middleweight. They were against DDP and Izzy and they were second round finishes. I, I don't know if Chimaev's going to be able to just bulldoze through him. 
um, in, in that regard. So again, I think Whitaker could edge this out if the fight goes longer. I'm assuming it's a three round fight. This really should be a five round fight if it is going to be for the middleweight title or the winner gets to fight for the middleweight title. But yeah, I'm going to lean on my guns here and go with Whitaker. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that, but I just, again, I picked Whitaker the first time around. I'm not going to change my pick all of a sudden. And Taporia Holloway is very interesting. So for me, and again, these are all fights I will be doing early looks on for sure. And that's a show where I do like a deep dive on every uh, matchup. Um, with Taporia and Holloway, I think that Holloway might be able to pull this one off. And the reason I think that is Holloway's never been knocked out. Now, eventually he's going to get knocked out, you would think. I mean, not everyone's invincible that way. But if Taporia can't knock out Holloway and the fight goes longer, like we haven't really seen Taporia go into deep waters before in, in a five round fight. We have seen Holloway do that. We've seen Holloway in a fifth round of a fight in his last fight still have enough energy to go toe to toe with his opponent. Like that's something that I think is going to be a factor, not to mention the experience factor for Holloway that he's been in there with some of the best, a lot more better fighters than Taporia. I know Taporia is coming off a massive win over Volkanovski, and I certainly am not downplaying that. But Holloway is tough to take out. And I think over five rounds, if Ilya can't get the finish early, I think you have to favor Holloway. And I just don't see Holloway getting knocked out. So my pick there will be Max Holloway for that matchup. A couple other things about this card. Um, so I'll kind of actually, now that I think about it, something that does make sense. They probably just needed uh, Ankh Live on this card anyways, just to appease the, the fan base. So, I mean, maybe Rakic was the only guy available. So again, while I'm not a fan of this fight, I can also understand, okay, well, you need Ankh Live on the card against someone. We're not going to do Pereira because Pereira's been bailing us out basically every couple cards. So I can understand that. So maybe it was just a case of keeping him busy. If that's the case, I guess that's not the, the end of the world because it is a fresh matchup. And I don't think Jamal Hill or Jan Blahovic are ready to fight. So, because they're still dealing with injury stuff. So I could absolutely see that happening uh, for sure. Um, the other thing is obviously Islam's not on this card. That's the thing that, you know, I'm sure people will talk about. There were some rumblings that he was dealing with an injury. Uh, what was it? A hand injury or something? Uh, let me find this. Uh, <coughs> yes, yeah, a hand injury, as you can see here. Sorry, I'm a little bit congested, guys. Still dealing with a cold. Uh, so, yeah, so maybe that's, I mean, that I would assume. I think the plan, if the UFC had it their way, was going to be Islam headlining this card against Armin. That would have made a ton of sense here. Uh, I'm curious to see where Islam fights now. Um, there is some rumblings that they might be doing another Middle East card early next year. So I could see them doing that for Islam as well. But I guess that's a disappointing part. Because when you think of these Middle Eastern cards, usually you think of Islam defending his title. And everyone wants to see that rematch with Armin. So I'm assuming he's not ready to go. And that's why they opted to go with um, uh, Tapuria and Holloway. And, and again, I think the way the UFC is kind of booking these cards is they want to have a Muslim head, heavy card, but they also want to put on really good fights. That's why, um, you know, again, they, they're, you know, putting some big names on these events like, you know, Gone and Volkov. And I've even forgot they have Lerone Murphy and Dan Ige. That's going to be a great card. Like this is going to be a really, really good pay-per-view. Um, so yeah, um, again, uh, I think Tapuria Holloway was the next best option to have headline that card. And uh, UFC pulling out all the stops. I mean, I wish every pay-per-view was like this, but it's kind of tough with the schedule they're sort of putting out there. So again, I'll just quickly mention it. Uh, Taporia Holloway, my quick... And these picks can change, guys, but for now, just off the top of my head, I'm going Holloway over Taporia. I'm going Whitaker over Chimaev. I'm going Gone over Volkov. And I'm obviously going Ankalaev over Rakic. But we'll see how this all sort of pans out. So I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. How great is this card? This might end up going down as one of the best pay-per-views we've seen this year, although pretty hard to top UFC 300. Um... Yeah, and what are some of your early picks on, on this uh, on this card? I would love to hear from you. I will be getting early look previews and pros picks for most of these fights uh, in the coming months, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, my name is James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Uh, appreciate you tuning in, and I'll talk to you guys soon.